Hey everybody, Noah here at the Rogue Traders Gaming. Today I'm going to do a little uh, video on how to build a gaming table. If you can see here, this is my current table that I have set up in the shop. Um, I built this a little, little while ago. It is four foot by seven feet approximately. Um, it is also built on top of a stand. I'm a big fan of uh, re reduce, reuse, recycle. The table that I'm going to be using today as a base to build this is my old dining room table. Um, especially with the cost of materials and lumber right now since COVID, lumber is at a premium price right now and doubled the cost of what it normally is. So I'm going to reuse this table to build a base. So these are the conditions I'm working with today. Less than desirable. As you can see, we have snow, we have ice, but I picked up my material today and uh, I'm going to get started on this. Base, my basic material list for this job are two sheets particle board. Uh, I also bought four sticks of door casing and I also bought some 2x4s which I'm going to rip down in half and uh, I'm going to rip them in half because 2x4s are $6 a piece and they are normally $3 a piece so we're trying to do this as cheaply as possible. But these are the tools that I'm using to get this job done. We're starting off with a circular saw. Straight edge, some kind of line. Uh, Nail gun does not have to be electric. You could be a nail gun, uh, air powered, wherever you got. Sander, you obviously use sandpaper if you needed. Um, I have a miter saw and I have a table saw. I also have my board set up on some saw horses and uh, we're ready to go. So, the end goal for this table is my, I want my table to be around seven feet long. So, I'm going to be pulling my line from one end down, marking off at 82 inches drawing a straight line and I'm going to cut right there. The goal is the least amount of cuts possible. I'm going to keep my table at a full four foot wide so I don't have to make any long rip cuts which are very difficult. The other thing I wanted to mention was the reason I'm making my table seven feet long um, the new addition table is 44 to 60, I believe. This gives you plenty of room on both ends of the table. Leaves about an extra foot on either side for staging your armies for uh, photo ops, uh, gameplay, whatever you want to do. And also um, in the construction sense, at that size, it makes the least amount of waste out of the lumber so I can get this table done. Next thing that I'm going to be doing is cutting my 2x4s for the long length rails of my table. Um, I'm going to take a standard 2x4 and I'm going to rip it in half to help me save some lumber. 2x4 is 3.5 inches, half is an inch and 3 quarters. I'm going to mark my 2x4 at an inch and 3 quarters and run it through the table saw and cut it in half. Alright, my 2x4s are cut down. I cut two of them in half so I have four lengths ripped down to approximately an inch and 3 quarters. All right, so my table is 82 inches long from end to end. So first off, I'm going to cut a 2x4 for this side and a 2x4 for that side. I'm going to cut them at 82 inches long. So I have one for this side. So I was trying to use wood glue, but it is so cold out, probably 20 degrees right now. My glue is frozen. Um, so my backup plan, construction adhesive. Just as good, if not actually probably even better. I have a nice long bead, set down the whole thing. I'm gonna set my board and screw away. The other thing I wanted to point out was what size screw I'm using. As you can see, um, because I don't want any screws exposed in the front, I'm gonna go with a two inch screw. That's about that depth, and it'll secure this nice and tight with the combination of the glue and the screw. Good to go. The next step is going to be cutting the rails for the end here. I measure the distance in between my two side rails. I'm at 46 inches light. I'm going to cut a piece for this end, cut a piece for this end, and I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to lay down a bead of liquid nails or glue, and I'm going to screw my board to it. So the other thing I wanted to mention was this. If you look closely at a 2x4, one side has a nice rounded edge, almost a rounded smooth edge. 
Um, by using this side down on your table, when you set your, your outside rails, when players are holding right here as they're playing their game, they're holding under the table, it already has a nice smooth round finish. So all we have to do later on is hit this with a sander, and you won't be getting splinters in the future. All right, all of the rails are on the table now, a right side, left side, and both ends. What you're looking at now is the completed underside of your table. What's also great about doing it this way is your table is four foot from end to end. That means your standard dining room table is going to fit right in between here. Most dining room tables are between 36 to 40 inches wide. Nobody really makes a four foot wide dining room table. So your table will literally sit right here. Also, the next thing I'm gonna do is flip this table over and get started. Probably not suggested. The next step, we're going to install our casing. The casing comes in seven foot lengths from most uh, Lowe's, Home Depot's, runs around nine dollars a piece. Another reason I used the table seven foot long is because I can get one piece of trim for each side and I don't have to waste any material. Next thing I'm going to be cutting a piece of casing to install along the side. All right, so I measured from one end of my table to the other. I'm at 82 inches exactly. I'm gonna cut two pieces of trim with outside miters, 82 inches long, for both my long sides of the table. My trim is now installed on the left sides and right sides. I'm going to finish the trim from both ends. I'm going to measure from this point to this point and come up with my next piece of trim. Mine's 49 inches. Perfect fit. All right, and I'm back. So here's what we got now. We have full casing around the entire table. Our table is nice and smooth, nice smooth finish. We have our casing, and then very below, we have a little bit of two by four reveal. Remember, that's that rounded factory edge. Um, so when you're gaming in the future and holding on to that, it actually is gonna feel really comfortable in your hands. Um, depending on what you wanna do next, this could be the end of the road for you. You can stop right here, and it's already a really good table. But if you wanna take it a little further and make it a little more badass, keep watching. All right, it was freezing outside, so I came inside. Right now, you might be saying to yourself, gee, now what? It looks pretty cool. So this rest of this video is for the person that really wants to go the extra mile. Um, what you're looking at right now is my table. You can see it has a little extra fancy trim area, some build-out trim. That's what we're gonna do next. Here. So here's our table. It is now just sitting on top of the previous table. This is how it's designed. It's designed to be sitting on top. The next section we're gonna work on is, here's our completed top. We're gonna to install the piece of one by that is gonna come down and is going to create the same dimensions that we see here. The next section of trim is going to be installed from this behind this edge right here, right here, and run down the entire length to the other side. I'm gonna pull a measure from both sides and that piece of one by is going to be installed along the back side of this. What I came up with my table is 79 inches long and five inches deep. I'm gonna cut two boards, 79 inches long, five inches deep. I'm gonna run it through the table saw, rip it down to five inches, cut it in the miter saw at 79 inches and install. My next step, I'm taking those pieces I just ripped down, taking my two inch screws, I've already uh, preset them in my board. Simply gonna take my board on the back side, I'm gonna crawl under the table and screw it off from behind, leaving no screws exposed.
Alright, as you can tell, I have a side piece on this side and I also have one down the other side. The next thing we're going to do is measure from this point inside to the far one and cut two more pieces that are five inches deep by whatever length we come up with here. Alright, my end pieces are cut. They're like this. I already put pre-started my screws so it's easier to, to access while I'm crawling around under the table. I'm gonna take my end pieces, screw them on the back side, and finish it off. The other thing that I wanted to mention was this. I'm using screws, um, mostly screws, because I'm building this table for my gaming store. I'm assuming that this table is gonna be pushed around, moved, flipped upside down, moved around over the years. I want this thing to last. Um, screws are always the way to go. This is the underside view. Here's our casing trim. Here's our two by four perimeter. And these are those pieces of one by five that are ripped down to five inches wide. All right, my tabletop is nearly complete. The last thing we're gonna work on is putting these little kind of gothic blocks in it. They're just here to kind of give your table a little more dimension. I'm gonna cut these blocks at three and a half by three inches. I'm gonna make two of them with an outside miter, install them. And then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna make two blocks for the bottom side. One at two and a quarter, and two and a quarter by five and a half with a miter, and they're gonna be recessed in the back to give it this fancy angle. All right, so I'm gonna be making eight blocks because we have our table. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight blocks, I'm gonna make them three inches on the inside, four inches on the outside. I'm gonna make eight of them, and I'm going to attach them together like this and install them on the outside corners. As you can see, I'm gonna be making eight of these blocks. These blocks are three inches tall, three inches to the inside miter, and the miter cut's gonna be this direction. So we're left with approximately three inch by four. And I'm back. All right, eight blocks are made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are pairs, one for each corner. You can see, here's our dimensions. Three inches, three inches, and three inches tall. Now we're gonna take these, put them together like so, and then we're going to install them on the corners. I got some construction adhesive on there. Take them, put them right on there, take my trim gun, and shoot away. One of my last steps is I made eight more blocks. Made eight more blocks just like this. Two inches by three inches with a miter cut. And I'm going to take them and attach them to the back side of my table. And that's gonna complete the trim. I'm gonna do one of these on every corner. And one of the final steps before I paint is going to be the paint prep. Paint prep is pretty much the same as um, removing your, your mold lines in a Warhammer model. Uh, putting a proper base coat down and applying green stuff. So the green stuff for this project is going to be your painter's putty and your painter's caulk. Um, painter's caulk is applied to the edges to tighten up all those joints. Wood putty is applied to all the holes and your paint prep will be complete. As you can see, the paint prep is done now. Um, the corner looks 10 times better than it did yesterday. And uh, we're ready to throw some paint on here. That is it, it's done, your table's done. Um, the next step is I'm going to finish off the bottom underside of the table. That is something specific to my certain table. Everyone has a different table that they're gonna be setting this piece on top of. So if you wanna finish that, that's fine. If you don't, you wanna leave it exposed, that is perfectly fine also. For me, this is what my table looks like underneath. I'm gonna be building some sort of wooden frame around it to enclose it in for storage. If you notice, mine has storage underneath. That's where I keep all my terrain. All of it's right there at the table. And the table is pretty much done. Um, the top is done, all the trim work is done. I've done pretty much everything now other than paint. Um, for my particular table, I decided to close in the bottom with some three quarter inch MDF. Um, MDF plywood, same as I used in the top. 
As you can see the back side, put some storage underneath. I have shelves for train, and I made an access panel on the side for my neoprene roll-up battle mats, the four foot ones. They can slide on the top shelf and they'll slide right on in through the access one hole. One last thing before I paint this, I'm gonna give you one view of this before I move on. The reason I built this table the way I did was because the cost of materials are really expensive right now. And it's so much cheaper to find a used table somewhere laying alongside of the road, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, whatever. It's much easier to pick up a used table for $50 than to go to a hardware store or Lowe's or Home Depot, buy nuts, bolts, lags, all the crazy hardware that is required to build something. It is much easier to repurpose something sometimes than it is to start from scratch. This tabletop is literally sitting on top of my old table. That is my old table. There is not a single screw attached to this. This is completely built around my old table. paint choice. Matte finish is an awesome look. I love the look of matte. Problem with matte paint is you can't wipe it off. Semi-gloss is also a great look too. Semi-gloss gloss is very wipeable for surfaces, especially a table like a gaming table that's going to get a lot of use, a lot of hands and fingers and grease and oil on. I went with the satin paint. Satin's in, in between in the road. Doesn't show all the fingerprints, doesn't show as many imperfections in the table, and the satin is still easy to clean. I hope you had as much fun watching this video as I had making it. And a correction, earlier in the video I said it took six hours. It did not. It actually took me three hours. I misspoke. It took me three hours to build the entire table and do all the recording. Um, feel free to hit the subscribe button. It should be somewhere around here. Um, I'm Noah from the Rogue Traders Great Gaming, and happy hobbying.